Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be learning how to find the electric potential at the edge of a uniformly charged uh, disk. And we'll also find out the electrostatic energy stored in the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk. So let's begin by finding out the potential. Okay, so in the Pathfinder problem, the expression given for the potential is, is slightly different. So you can try out this problem uh, after watching the video. You'll be easily able to solve this problem. So first, we'll determine the potential at the edge of a uniformly charged disk. Okay guys, so let's say this is our disk and let's say its surface charge density is sigma and the radius of the disk is capital R. So let's call the edge point as P. So we are trying to determine the potential at this point P due to the disk. Okay, so we are taking the reference potential uh, at infinity to be zero. So the first concept that we'll be using is that if we take a point charge plus Q, then and if we want to find out the potential, the electric potential at a point P, which is at a radial distance of R from the plus Q charge, if we assume the reference potential uh, at r tending to infinity to be zero so then the reference then the potential at p is one by four by epsilon naught q divided by r and we're going to be using that concept uh, in this video so now the first step is we have to take a differential element on the disk so we first move uh, an angle of theta in any direction and we move further by a small angle of d theta so i purposefully exaggerated the diagram uh, in order to explain it Okay, and now what we are doing is move a distance of r along this element and move a differential distance of dr forward and we are going to consider this arc element. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the arrows so as to make this more clear. So this is the element that I'm talking about. So in reality guys, this is a very small element so I have purposefully exaggerated the diagram so as to explain it better. So this length over here is going to be dr. And this, by using the arc length formula, uh, it is going to be r times d theta, right? If I consider the area of this small patch as dA, then I can write dA as r d theta multiplied by dr. So as this is a very, very small charge, we can, we can use the formula we discussed earlier for the point charge. By using that, we get the potential as one by four pi epsilon naught. The charge of this element, which is again sigma multiplied by dA, divided by the distance of the element from the point P, and that is, as you can see, R. So I'm going to write R there, and from here, the R's cancel out, and the small potential dV due to this element comes out to be this particular value. So now if we want to find out the total contribution due to the disk, we have to integrate this. And in the right hand side, we have uh, this is an integration uh, with two variables. So we have R and theta as our variables. So this is, uh, this is something that we call as a double integral. So we have to put two S signs here. And the other tricky part here is that now both R and theta are variables. So if you put limits of R as zero to capital R, and if you put the limits as minus 90 to plus 90, this would give you the wrong answer. And uh, the reason for that is R itself is actually dependent on theta. For example, if you take this theta over here, as you can see, R is very small. Whereas if you take theta equal to zero, then as you can see, this is your R, that is 2R. So now, uh, how do we do this? So, so first of all, we have to determine one integral by assuming the other variable to be constant. For example, let's say we are computing the innermost integral, that is integral dr. Okay guys, so now, uh, how do we determine the limits of R? So as I said, we have to keep theta constant. Okay, so now let's say theta is constant. The lowermost limit of R is zero, but the uppermost limit of R is this particular value. I'm gonna remove some lines so as to make it a little more clear. Let's say I join uh, this point to this point. Okay, so this angle is going to be 90 degree. Uh, and this is a property of circles, right? Horizontal line is the diameter, so this is 2R. So R from this right triangle, you can see it is 2R cos theta. So the upper limit of R is going to be 2R cos theta. So integral dr is now we can integrate this expression and put the limits in and you'll get the answer as 2r cos theta. So now we have figured out the innermost integral. So now our expression is going to be 2r cos theta times d theta. So, so now what are the limits of theta? So theta will vary from uh, minus 90 degrees till plus 90 degrees, right? So it's going to be minus pi by 2 till pi by 2. And the integral of cos is sine theta. And after putting in the values, you'll get that the potential at the edge of a disk is sigma r divided by pi epsilon naught. So, okay, so this is the answer to the first problem, uh, the Iridov problem. Okay, guys, so now let's discuss the electrostatic energy stored in the electric field of the disk. Okay, guys, so an alternate way to finding the electrostatic energy stored in the electric field is to find out the energy it took to build the system. So as in our case, it is a uniformly charged disk, right? So let's say at any general time, the radius uh, of our disk is smaller. And clearly smaller is less than capital R because we have not fully built our disk yet. 
Okay, so now let's say we are bringing a small amount of charge dq uh, far away from the influence of any fields. That is basically we are bringing it uh, from infinity. So we sprinkle the dq charge uh, along the circumference of our disk and hence as a result the radius of our sphere increased by an amount of dr. The dq charge we spread out uh, among an area of 2 pi r dr, right? So it is going to be sigma times 2 pi r dr. And now if I want to write down the work that it took to do that process, that is basically to bring dq charge from infinity and to place it at the circumference of our disk, the answer to that is the charge dq times the potential difference, right? That's a whole concept of the potential difference, right? So this is going to be dq multiplied by the potential at the circumference of a disk. We, dis we discussed in the last page, it was sigma r upon pi epsilon naught, where r is the radius of our disk at this particular instant. So after rearranging the terms, we obtain the value of dw as this particular value. So now all we have to do is integrate this expression. And from here, we'll get the total electrostatic energy of the disk. And this would be equal to two by three sigma square. This will be two by three sigma square r cube upon epsilon naught. So that's it for this video, guys. You, can, uh, you guys can try out Pathfinder MCQ 23 now. You, sh you should be able to solve it with what you learned in this video. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. And do like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And that's it. Thanks for watching.